All right, guys, I'm uh, with Brian Daniel of Springhouse Magazine and Mark Motsinger, a local history uh, super knowledge and teacher at Mount yeah, Carrier Mills, Mills, history teacher. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go check out a uh, abandoned uh, silver mine that I've always heard about. Um, going to drop a camera down in it and see what's down there. It's going to be pretty exciting, I think, if we can walk there. We're at the uh, Stoneface parking lot right now which as you can see is currently abandoned but this used to be one of my favorite places to go and check out Stoneface when I was younger so we are gonna be walking for a little bit straight uphill straight uphill <laughs> please fix this road the bucket list place for a lot of people because a lot of people have read about it and uh, never been there and they talk about I'd like to go to the silver mine and where is the silver mine at and, I guess some of the books that that talk about it talk about it being a lo the lost silver mine. I think the, the young book, the uh, Weird Egypt, talks about it, and and uh, a lot of people their information about the silver mine comes from that. And because it's such a kind of a hard place to get to, most people have never seen it. So uh, it kind of makes it a kind of a weird anomaly for a lot of people. They know it's out there, they've heard of it their whole life, but they don't really know where it's at. Now about what year uh, was it actually operating? I think, from what I understand, it closed in the 1870s. Oh really? I yeah. thought it was more recent than that. No, it was, it's pretty, I think people have tried to do things with it uh, since then, but whoever was operating it, from what I understand, there was two families that actually made a living off of it for a little while. And uh, they eventually got to the point where they couldn't keep the water out of it. And when you see it, you'll understand why, because it's right in a creek bed. It would basically be a dry weather uh, operation. But then it got to the point where it was deep enough to where it just held water all the time. I mean, there's, as we when we see it, there's water in it right now. I uh, wonder how they would have pumped water out, or could they have? I don't know what the... They would have had to have to operate it. So. And you can tell that there was... That they didn't come into it the way we're going into it, that's for sure. Uh, through private property and, and uh, multiple rose bushes and southern Illinois jungle today, there was probably a road that went through that way and connected down there. So we've arrived at the bluff and now we are walking to the right. There's sort of a trail. There's a trail to the left that gets a little bit more walk. This is definitely a trail. You can follow it. enough weight. I'm gonna have to tie a rock to it. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> tie that iron ore to it. <laughs> So the initial depth looked to be a few feet, kind of over on the uh, closer side here. But when Brian went and checked out the far side where Mark saw a ladder in the past, um, our submersible is going, and uh, I'd, I'd, I'd say he's probably over 10 feet now at least. It's way down there. I was surprised by how how quickly I couldn't see the light anymore. Like it was there and then it was just gone. Mm -hmm. You know that the hole he's in might not be very big. Yeah. It just disappeared. You couldn't see it anymore. Yeah. Cause that's 50 foot. I bet you had 40 of it down the hole. Yeah. Yeah. I only had a few feet left. You come up and there's nothing left. But yeah. Cool. <laughs> a brave adventuring light. Well, this is actually a really cool shot because there's your reflection on the water and then the light coming up to the surface. Good cinematography right there. I'm going to win some awards.